All right, for more on what the apology means for Indigenous peoples, we're joined by Dr. Esther Tailfeathers. Uh, Dr. Tailfeathers is a family physician. We reached her in Standoff, Alberta today. Uh, thank you so much, doctor, for giving us your time. Yes, thank you for asking me. You heard there in Susanna's story, heard a couple of the clips there, um, you know, speaking in terms of what this means. But for you, what does it mean um, being in the profession, but also seeing and experiencing what you have, um, you know, and, and what the people, what, what the Indigenous peoples have experienced? I'm very happy to hear the apology and uh I've been, you know, stuck in two different worlds at times, recognizing mm -hmm. what physicians go through when we're under a lot of stress, but also hearing from my patients and the people in my community and other communities on the wrongful uh, actions and, uh, and the way that they've been treated, which often ultimately end up in poor outcomes for those patients, including mm -hmm. mortality. So I'm very happy to hear this, and I think that we have a new start a lot of work to do though. Talk to me a little bit more about being on both sides of the gurney there, as, as you've described it, you know, and, and, and being, uh, you know, um, indigenous yourself and having to this sort of battle through to become and, and to do what you've been able to do as a doctor, but also hearing from your patients in terms of the treatment that they've experienced. What has all of that been like? What have they been telling you and, and how has it been for you to handle all of it? Well, sometimes it feels like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place mm -hmm. because you recognize the treatment of your people as patients in a medical system. And it's overwhelming. The, the, throughout the years, I hear at least one or two complaints a day, um, sometimes more and some more horrific than others. And to have to uh, address that on a daily basis in the institutions that you work in is sometimes overwhelming, but you have to also recognize when you're working in the emergency room, the stress of um, attending to, you know, some very serious um, issues and not having time to address um, the bias itself. And uh, so it's, it's a difficult place to be. And I'm very welcoming of this news because I know that it's going to alleviate a lot of the tension that um, Indigenous physicians mm -hmm. and Indigenous frontline workers have in terms of working with colleagues who don't even recognize that they're biased um, and recognizing the harm that's done to patients. Um, so I'm very happy to hear this and I think that um, we have a new start and I'm really hoping that uh, the work can be done in a in a very organized manner from other institutions as well mm -hmm. and being able to have so that important significant domino effect um, in, in this case and a very very important first step as we're hearing here but what do you want to see that next you know the, the step has happened but now the action has to take place what are you hoping that is going to look like or it needs to look like I did hear um, uh, them talking about uh, engagement and including Indigenous people um, at those decision-making tables, mm -hmm. which I think is most important. But uh, definitely education of um, medical professionals and people in the front line um, on Indigenous health issues. Engagement um, uh, between Indigenous patients and learners, medical learners, which really help people to come together and understand what those difficulties are. The inclusion of Indigenous voices at all levels of physician training is really important. Um, impacting physicians in leadership roles who actually imp impact or help with policy and decision making at some very, very high levels because many physicians rise to leadership roles and if they take with them um, the um, the uh, the thought of what's happening with Indigenous people and wanting to make the difference, I think that those leaders will help us to make the difference. Um, recognizing their systemic bias, mm -hmm. um, which is included in those decision-making processes and um, whether it be neglect or be right out um, uh, um, bias against Indi uh, Indigenous communities and what they receive as medical, um, you know, as medical services, I think, is inherent in the decision-making processes, which physicians have a part of. Right. So I think that this is all very good news because I think that we're seeing some good leadership and, um, and definitely a sincere mm -hmm. and genuine apology. So we take it and we run with it and we do what yeah. we can to make those changes. Doctor, before I let you go, there's also the importance of building that trust and that allyship 
with indigenous peoples. We've heard the CMA talk about that. I've got a few seconds left here, my apologies, but talk to me a little bit about that. Can we rebuild that trust? Can we have that allyship? I think we can build that trust and that comes from the one-to-one you know, the one-to-one -one interactions between a physician and a patient mm -hmm. and the genuine listening and the genuine respect for where that patient is coming from, from. And, um, and recognizing that Indigenous health history is embedded in the, his the colonial history of this country and that new uh, thinking and um, allyship can really change that and hopefully impact those mm -hmm. Uh, measures that were talked about by the CMA, uh, life expectancy, infant mortality, mm -hmm. you know, all of our morbidity rates. I'm really hoping that our people see better outcomes. We'll be following this story indeed, and it's such a pleasure being able to talk to you. And as you say, such an important first step. Uh, Dr. Esther Tailfeathers is a family physician in Standoff, Alberta. Doctor, thank you again. Thank you.